Hi folks, do you want to see what is the best plugin ever and the new features that are in it? Of course you do. So what is it? Well, it's Boris Effect Optics as you've clearly seen from the thumbnail. Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and we're going to talk about one of my favorite plugins that is just so creative, I just love working with it. We're going to talk about some of the new features. Now it's been out a while and I've had a long chat with Renee Robin who is the product manager who actually came from Particle Shop, another plugin that I absolutely love as well. So we're gonna have a look at new features, like what it is, so some of the stuff that's going on is kind of just workflow changes, we'll discuss some of them, but we're gonna show the really, really big thing, which of course is Mask ML. So let's have a look here. So here's an image that I've shot recently, and it's, it's done with gels and gobos, so it kind of sits right in with what we do with Boris effects anyway. So we're gonna add more effects to it, uh, and along those lines, you can actually put gobos inside of effects yourself. Uh, that's a very old thing back from the TIFF and DFX days. But specifically here, we're gonna jump in to Photoshop from Photoshop here, and we're gonna go up to Filter, Boris effects, and grab Optics. And then Optics is gonna open as it does in the wrong window for me recording. Um, and it's gonna ask if we wanna apply previous filters, and I click no, so I'm just gonna actually gonna get this and make it fill the screen. So we're straight in and we can see that we do have just basically our original layer and then we have the current layer with nothing selected. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply something that I like, which is some orbs. Let me just change the size of this here because it's kind of there from the other window size. And you can, if you wanna find stuff really, really quickly, I'm actually need to make this a bit higher so we can see the names. You can slide along, but you do also have the option that you can, you can search for what you want. In this case here, I'm looking for orbs. And that's orbs there, so we click on that. No, didn't want to do that. It is here though. And so we're down here and we have all of the different aspects and presets that we have in those orbs, but we're actually just gonna do, deal with this one manually. I'm, actually, I'm gonna talk a small bit about orbs and then we're gonna move on from there just because I love using orbs. And so orbs is based around uh, an illumination point, which is this here. So everything appears to work around that. So as we can move it around, it gives you an idea of what's happening. So if we put this on the face and we go invert illumination, what it'll do is it's coming out from the face, basically from there. So your illumination radius is how far around it is. We can actually bring it right against the face. And by using the feather, or the fall off rather, we can change how that actually goes out from the face. So you have to control where is not being affected directly by this as part of the actual uh, filter itself. Now here you can do things like we can change the colors. Let's grab a color from the background. So it starts to go more with those kind of blue greens that we have here. And as we can change the scale and the scale randomness, so that changes what kind of sizes they are. And we have blur uh, and blur randomness, so we can have them, some of them a bit more in focus or less in focus by changing the mixture of the depth blur and the randomness as well. Um, intensity obviously is how strong they are. We're gonna leave those roughly where they are for now. Light source is just that position here. If we go moving, you'll see that will move. Okay. Uh, the color we've seen and color randomness is just how far it goes away from what we have. Okay, so if we bring that in, we'll see that the colors stay kind of closer to those blue greens. A little small little purple here, which you don't mind too much. Um, coherence, uh, it's just, it's basically, it acts like movement within it. Flicker amount, uh, if we see here, because these are time-based effects, you can see that by changing the flicker amount, you have which ones of these flicker. Um, you've got a couple of other things, like the random seed will completely change how these look, okay? So that's just basically the seed from it. Now, we're not gonna use the prism or the color correct. So let's assume that I'm happy with this, but I just actually don't want these orbs on the body. Well, what are our options? Well, I can paint away uh, using normal paint tools, or I can use, as I would have in the past, I would have used uh, uh, easy mask, so we've come to the masking here. We've used easy mask here, but now I'm gonna come in with mask ML, okay? So what this does is it allows you to click points and it will figure out what you want from here. So it says loading model at the start. And um, so it's basically using AI to select what's in, in the models here. And so if I start moving around here, this is the areas where it's gonna try and add stuff in as you move around. Now, if I had, say, like a black and white, you'd be able to get a better idea. So I want to invert this because I, I, do, I, I want it to be outside. So if I click in here, the green spots, I'm saying I don't want it here. I don't want it here. I don't want it here. And now it'll start to join these. Now, you don't necessarily know what's happening. 
So you come in here and you can go view mask, right? And that'll show you what the mask is. So we can see areas are not being selected. So we can click on those and it will start to add those to the mask. Okay, and that's I think nearly everything there. All right. So if we click back, we can uh, view image. Okay, and so that's going to show it with basically. Let me just let, allow that to happen. So it's going to show it with the orbs in place, and we can see that it's masked out. Now, if you have a little bit of detail issues, what you can do is you can come up here and you can change the edge. All right. So you can you, you, inside the mask. Let me just view mask again. So you can come out and you, you create in the edge of the mask, but you can also create inside it as well. Just if there's areas that are inside for the edge position, you can use that as well. So you have your generate edge. Sorry, if we hover here, it'll come up. So that's our, like we have the edge size and it's gonna let me do it. Uh, but if we, it, it, let's just do it. You'll see that it, it moves around. So basically, you're, you're just getting for the edges and around the edge, and then you go generate mask, and it will then use that to try and create a better mask. See the way it's done a little better selection on the hair around here? So that's just a little bit better selection than we have from the mask itself. So we're able to use AI to build a mask, and we're also able to uh, then basically generate the edge from there. If you wanted to have areas that were definitely deselected, you would right click and that would give you red areas that you're saying that like, you don't want these particular areas. Then you come in again with your mask edge again and then generate again. And that will again try and fix it for you. So now let's back to view image here for a second. So we can now see the mask with the image. So if we click on the image inside the layer mask, we can now see that it's done a really, really nice job of masking this. So ML mask is very, very, very useful. It's absolutely fantastic it really really is it's going to take so much pain out of doing masks for these effects i love them i just love them it's just it's so good all right so you've seen orbs which is one of my favorite tools to use as well as uh, ml mask ml rather being used in this as well before we look at more of the big changes let's talk about some of those small workflow changes so the first small change that i love right it's not exactly the same as Lightroom and Photoshop, but you can now use plus or minus, or as the case may be, it's actually kind of minus and equals, but everybody thinks of it as plus and minus to zoom in and out. Now, we are used to command or control with that, but however, it's a big change from the random keys that used to be the shortcut, which I just don't remember. Okay. We can also take a look at workspaces. Now, I've gone in and clicked reset all. That's why it just looks very different. And um, so you've got advanced, you've got edit, uh, sorry, that's advanced edit, and view and we can see that they have shortcut keys and uh, the function keys so we also have enter full screen now this is a two screen setup so it will actually open it on the wrong screen so if I, I just show you very quickly so the full screen is the other screen so I need to click on that other full screen and click escape to get back to this view and uh, but you'll need to see that on your own machine for that um, and then we can click new let's say we call this Sean we stick this on F5 because that's not used currently. We click OK. And let, what do we want in this workspace? Well, let's say we want to have more things turned on. So we go to Windows and Parameters. We want Presets. Maybe we want Variations. Uh, we, we don't like what we want. We want Filters, maybe. We don't really want EXIF or Metadata. We want Layers, though, definitely. OK, so we build these up a little bit from what we have. So this is slightly different. So now what we could do potentially with this is we could potentially make the filters go over a little bit. So let me just pull presets here for presets out for a second. Let's put these over here. Get layers over here for a second. And now we can see that filters has taken up a bit more space. So let me go and grab my layers again and put it up here. So we can see that because we've moved that out, that filters are going over a lot more. And grab presets and put presets here as well. And that's not what I wanted to do. I, I wanted presets to be separate. So bring layers up and then have this drop in on top and then bring these down. So now I have more room for my presets here and I can bring this down. So this is now my Sean work, work uh, space. Now, one of the things that Renee did when she took over was she did lots of organization and categorization. 
it's a long and tedious job and I don't envy her for doing it but I'm also very very thankful we take filters here filters look great here at the moment everything's really organized like favorites and customs can be here now my favorites didn't uh, copy over um, from before and some of my custom presets are gone that needs to be reorganized but let us look at say let's say we're gonna you know we could make a preset so let's click here to make a preset and um, so I had started to make this already so I've given this name Zorbs my name is in here information is put in there so we click OK it's just remember what I did before basically so I click OK and we can see that this has appeared here now in theory if I right click and I go open custom preset location that will allow me to open the folder that it's in and uh, but my issue is that it actually tries to open it up inside of Phoenix code for some reason which is a bit annoying uh, rather than showing the location for this but it's in the uh, it's in documents boris fx slash optics slash presets slash orbs and that's where you'll see your custom presets and now if we go to filters here go to custom presets we can see that uh, these ones are it's starting to show my other ones actually now so these are ones I've created before. So they've just come back because it's basically recognized where that location is. Another great improvement is a simple shortcut, and that is M. So we press M and back off again, it will toggle the mask. It's time for some of the big and cool features. So this time we are going to go create a new layer. And as you can see, I'm already ready in Particle Illusion because I'm going to show painting with particles. So let's I click on say animate or emit so let's pick something colorful here for our mid particles. Try and find something that's keeping a color. Yeah, let's go for blue stars here. Okay. And if we click here, we can see we got this new thing called particle brush strokes. And it's inside particle creation. Now, this is unknown for a lot of the normal presets. But here we're going to go and we're just literally brushing. So we'll brush in. And what we can do here then is we can grab this mask up. So the mask is then blocking it in the background. And we can then go in and do things like choose colors. So choose something more like down here as a tint color, um, which will darken down a bit as well. And we can go in and make changes within the actual particle itself. And uh, particle properties. Uh, so we can even, like with time, we can actually bring it back, which will probably fade it back a little bit because it's quite strong. And life, number, size, size, bring it down. Okay. That's more kind of in keeping with what's going on with the rest of the image, for example, here. Um, so the great thing here is now you can get to do all of this painting and have painting control with your particles. So let's talk about a few small things that are still left. And we're not covering everything, but we've covered a lot of the cool things. Um, you can now, if you're coming in, you can like if you have a filter that you don't want to use, say for example, let's say you never use warp polar, you can hide it and it's hidden. And then if you want it back, you can just go show hidden filters and it will come back. I should really undo that and get back my looks that I want so I can have my thumbnail. You can also have different views now than before. So we have an AB view, but we also have the sliding view that we can have for before and after. And we can do vertical versions of that as well. And then you can just have your, your standard kind of before and after view as well. So folks, as you can see there, there's a good mix of workflow and big features. Mask ML is great. And I love the fact that you can paint with particles now as well. And the fact that this mask interactive is great, especially with those mask ML masks. The little workflows like zoom and mask shortcuts are great. And just general, you know, life improvements. I do love optics. It's used in a lot of work that you don't necessarily see me publishing, uh, but it is my favorite plugin by far. Uh, I think the only plugin that I would use around the same amount, maybe, or maybe slightly more depending on the client, is, is the Retouch For Me plugins, which I love as well. Uh, there is a discount for this, and um, I'm gonna put the code and link and stuff in the description. I think the code is actually built into the link, basically, it is an affiliate link. And um, you do get the discount, and I do get a little something for it, but I'm not selling you this plugin because of the fact that I'm trying to make money from it. I'm selling you this plugin because I love this plugin so much, and I do use it all of the time. Folks, thanks for watching, and do keep an eye out for more. I've got a few more plugin videos to come up soon. Uh, so that's the plan. This one took way too long. I've just been too busy with lots of things going on between, you know, doing photography work and writing and like the Lightroom conference. And of course, having a 
been involved in scout camps, which takes up a lot of my time. Anyway, folks, I will see you in the next video.